Hi, everybody. Really excited to have you all here. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'll jump back to the, um, my slide sharing in a, in a second. Um, if, uh, if you can uh, have your camera open, we'd love to see you. Um, it's you know, making us feel a little bit closer to what it would be like to have an actual event. So uh, uh, thank you for hi, seeing some familiar faces. Thank you all for joining. Really exciting to have you here. Um, both our speakers are here in the squares as well, and you'll, you'll hear more about them and from them soon. Uh, I'll just, before we get into the introductions and the content uh, and everything, just wanted to go through some of what we, the agenda, what we're going to go through today. Um, so as you know, we are here to chat about uh, how to market the essential nature of your product. Um, in the in the last few months, um, the ability to uh, to have an essential product, to have your product be considered as something that people, uh, you know, that is necessary for them in their day-to-day uh, -day lives or their work lives has become, uh, you know, more crucial than ever. Um, you can't be a nice to have, you have to be something that people really need. And um, this is what we will talk about today. And I'm really excited to, to get going. And uh, we will leave room for questions uh, at the end. If you have a question, you can type it in the chat at any time. And at the end, we'll go back to the chat and we'll go through the questions. So if you type it in, it'll, uh, we'll get uh, to it at the end of the session. Uh, otherwise, we'll appreciate if everyone stays muted, and other than our speakers who we're uh, looking forward to hearing from. Um, and uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get started. Um, I'll start just by uh, quickly introducing myself. So I'm Shahar. Uh, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Exco. Um, Exco uh, is a technology platform that allows any company to create content that is interactive, either content on their site, things like you know, a blog or a knowledge center or content that they use off of their site, like landing pages um, and so on. Um, and to turn that content into something that is engaging, that increases conversion, and that enriches the data that they get uh, from their audience. So just so you have a, a general idea, we're used by anyone from big brands to small to medium businesses to publishers who also utilize our um, video solution uh, with, uh, that has content and opportunities to increase revenue. So that's us on the high level. Um, and for the chat today, uh, we invited two speakers who work for companies that are, um, you know, as I said before, products that became even more essential during uh, the COVID time, during the last couple of months. Uh, and I'm really uh, excited to, uh, to introduce them and I'll let them uh, uh, expand, but I'll just give you kind of the highlights. Uh, so we have Leah Walters, who is the head of communications at uh, monday.com. Uh, for those of you who, not, who are not familiar with uh, Monday, it's, uh, it's a project management tool that's used by remote teams or not remote teams necessarily, but um, is something that, uh, that our marketing team utilizes as well uh, and really helps us stay connected during, um, you know, now that we're all working from home. And not even just now, we're a global company and always, uh, you know, need better ways to communicate and track our work. So uh, looking forward to, to hearing more uh, from Leah about how she communicates uh, the essential nature uh, of Monday. Leah has been with Monday for, I think, three and a half years now. Leah, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and uh, um, she started uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, similar to how, where I started uh, with Exco, and uh, will tell us uh, a lot more about her work. Uh, our second speaker is uh, Elise Borak. Um, she works for Capsule. Um, I had a, the, the pleasure of trying Capsule. Capsule is uh, uh, you know, basically rebuilding the pharmacy, the future of, of the pharmacy. And uh, they offer a technology and app that allows you to have uh, prescriptions delivered directly to you rather than go to the pharmacy and pick them up and go through an excruciating process. I know it's like that here in New York City and I'm sure 
Uh, you know, we have people from all over the world and I'm sure it's, uh, it's similar for, for all of you. It's not a fun experience and they're making it uh, into something that is easy. And again, now that we're, we're all in different levels of quarantine, um, even more essential to be able to, um, to, you know, to get to medication without uh, having to leave your home. Uh, so uh, Elise has been with Capsule for uh, a year now and uh, she is um, head of consumer marketing and looking forward to hearing a lot more from you both. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's move to, to our speakers. I think I, I spoke enough. Um, I'll uh, share my screen as they speak uh, so that you can see some of their details. But um, Leah, let's, let's maybe start with you and uh, maybe you can just expand a little bit more about yourself, your role, um, what you're doing in the day to day, and specifically, what was the biggest change to your work in the last couple of months that you can share? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's great to see everyone. Thanks for joining and thank you for that warm introduction, Shafar. The work you guys are doing is amazing. Um, in terms of my background, just like you said, I started in Tel Aviv three and a half years ago. Uh, my background was not in, in tech at all, but my husband is a management consultant who brought us to Tel Aviv and I happened upon these group of people who were building what is now known as Monday, then it was called Depulse and joined as the 29th employee for a team that just surpassed 500. So it's been really a crazy ride. Um, and just like you said, we are uh, what we call now a work operating system. So we see this as sort of a new category of software that is a platform that handles anything that you do related to work. So you can integrate, automate, plan, um, really manage your entire work process through the day. And we continue to be totally shocked and blown away by the incredible things that people are building. We serve about 200 business verticals. So from churches doing, doing fundraising to manufacturing plants producing Teslas to the largest temporary tattoo manufacturer in the world um, to you know most of the Fortune 500. So it's, it's really incredible to see um, while people have totally different workflows, they need the same building blocks to communicate, collaborate, and really work the way they want. So that's what we do. Um, in terms of the change we've seen, it's, it's a great question because so much is obviously different, but so much is the same. We uh, have always used digital marketing as our primary acquisition channel for, for customers. We are entirely a no-touch funnel, so we have stayed advertising on Facebook, Google, AdWords, across the review sites and that kind of thing. But a big change for us, of course, has been the messaging. Well, just like you mentioned, we used to have, um, we're used to having remote work that's never been who we targeted. So we very quickly changed all the messaging that we have to reflect um, remote teams and how the platform can be used for remote work. And that's really, I would say, the most significant change that we made. How, how we communicate with people, the tone we communicate, um, all of that remained the same and, and so did our, our acquisition channels. So I think that's a little bit of insight into how we've done things differently. Thank you. Um, yeah, that, I think that's probably something that a lot of people here can relate to. And I think something that was really interesting for me and in, you know, in the previous conversations we had before the event from both you and Elise is that um, you know, the, the biggest change or, or the, the thing that worked best was always around listening to our audience, learning what they really care about now and acting on that. And on that note, uh, Elise would love to uh, hear from you again, your intro and, and a little more about your day-to-day -day work and the biggest change for you. Uh, in the last couple of months. Yeah, for sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Cool. So, um, yeah, listening to customers is like a really great segue. That's really where I spent um, the early days of my career. Um, so I started out um, at Interbrand, um, a very large branding marketing consultancy. Uh, did a lot in marketing analytics and customer insights and market research. Um, I'm just like really fascinated by the psychology behind just consumer behavior. Um, 
and like how psychology ties into marketing. And, um, and so there I worked on really big clients like AT&T and, U- and UPS, um, and then also very small emerging brands or brands that were like repositioning themselves, for example, like Yellow Pages reemerging as YP. Um, and I got um, really kind of fascinated with um, technology and, uh, and just kind of got that startup bug, wanting to help kind of build something from the ground up. Um, so from there, I went to Boxed um, and was uh, about like the 30th or so employee there and helped build out the marketing team, um, leading integrated marketing and brand. Um, and then I've been at Capsule for about the past year leading consumer marketing. So um, it's kind of an, an opposite story from Leah of, of, how, of how things have shifted with Capsule. So, you know, Capsule, for those who live in New York City, I'm sure you've seen subway ads or taxis, et cetera. Um, that's very purposeful. And um, it's not that we just have a limited budget, but it's actually very strategic for us why we we market um, in and out of home. And it's it's the fact that it's it's healthcare and we want people to feel safe and, and to, to build awareness um, in a way that's really credible and legitimate. Um, and there's also nothing like the New York city subway, you know, to, to help with awareness. And then, um, you know, by the time that a friend or a doctor or someone, some other trusted source recommends capsule, um, you have that trust and legitimacy is a part of it. And I, I think that's just something that we believe is needed in healthcare. Um, and healthcare is very much about referral. You know, do you have a good doctor for this, et cetera. And so word of mouth um, and more top of funnel initiatives have always worked out for us. You know, it's really hard to, to say to someone who's, you know, to think that someone would be scrolling through their Instagram feed and all of a sudden say to themselves like, oh, cool, I think I'll switch my pharmacy today. Um, And so um, all of that completely turned on its head with COVID and all of a sudden um, there was huge demand and, you know, um, a lot of things that were not like a huge part of our strategy um, very suddenly became a very big part of our strategy and allowed us to be a lot more direct response because there was a, you know, a really critical need. Um, and all of that top of funnel marketing really paid off. Um, and so we really wanted to try to be there to look after as many, you know, New Yorkers as we could. Um, and what's exciting now is that, um, we're starting to expand into new markets and and try to and we and we accelerated a lot of those launches so that we could help out other cities as well. Thank you. That's yeah. That that's so interesting and and I'm sure it's been probably the craziest two months of uh, of the companies uh, it's been being the craziest and, two months probably of my entire career. Right. Right. I can imagine. <laughs> um, so looking forward to hear more about that. Uh, so we'll. We'll jump uh, next to um, to sh- hearing a little bit more specifically about different activities that we all uh, did in the last couple of months. Um, but before we get to that, uh, I wanted to give an opportunity to hear a little bit from uh, from our uh, participants here. Um, and I don't know how many of you have your phones uh, next to you. I'm assuming like 95%. So uh, just uh, open, open your cameras and scan the QR code. And uh, we just prepared a question for you that you can, uh, you can answer a little bit about uh, what marketing tactics you're utilizing or planning to utilize uh, in the next few months, the new normal. I don't know what, what we're supposed to call that anymore. Um, and we'll get back to at the end, uh, later in the, in the meeting, we'll get back to, um, how you voted and, and talk a little bit more about that. Um, so go ahead, scan the screen. I'll give a couple more seconds for anyone who wants to go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, I see some of you, uh, pointing your phones at the camera. I, I like this. Um, all right, so let's let's move forward and we'll get back to the poll results later. Um, so just to uh, do a quick overview of uh, what we're going to see from, uh, from our speakers. So uh, we'll hear a little from Leah about um, some of the activities they did. Again, this is um, 
you know, going into some specific uh, marketing activities that each of us did to communicate uh, the essential nature of our product during this time. Um, so Leah will tell us a little bit about how they used user feedback, uh, you know, work from home templates and different things that helped um, highlight the essential nature of, uh, of Monday. Uh, Elise will tell us a little bit more about using uh, influencers and creating a, a campaign around, you know, the value that the, the huge value that they provide during this time. And then I'll uh, add a little bit more about how, you know, being a content platform and uh, a lot of companies needing uh, to upgrade their digital content and to, um, you know, to communicate remotely, both with employees or clients or their audience in general, how did we make sure to, you know, to communicate where uh, our tool can help. So uh, Leah, should we start with you? I'll, let, I'll stop sharing so that you can share your screen and walk us through the examples. Um, awesome. Great. Okay, cool. So what we pulled together were just a couple of, just like you said, marketing tactics that we used in this time. Um, and yeah, I pulled a couple of examples to give you a sense. Okay, let's share properly with computers. Okay. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So, um, like I said, we really wanted to be true to ourselves to keep communicating um, to the audience that we always have in a super um, human way. We are, of course, a can be a B2B solution, but we've always marketed ourselves as a B2B. We've always spoken to the person. Actually, just like Elise was saying, um, you know, you don't scroll through Facebook and say, oh, I need to get a new prescription. Well, you typically don't either say, hey, I need to, um, you know, acquire a work operating system or something like that. But as it turns out, you do. <laughs> what we have learned is that those ads are super effective. So what we did was um, quickly uh, created an offshoot to our blog that we called a remote work hub. So we developed a ton of content that we felt could actually be useful to people. So examples would be as we scroll through here, our CTO um, gave advice on how to take a team through a crisis, or we did something on stats that might surprise you. We gave advice on how to boost speed and agility. And so we compiled it all here and then shared this with our audience on, and beyond with as much value add as we could um, think to contribute. And an example is, um, we did a post on how we shifted our roadmap to reflect COVID. So instead of um, going along and, and just developing the features that we thought, we thought, realized that our user base and potential new users needed a whole bunch of new things. So we had been working for a while on a new framework to create apps and features on the platform. And so we took all of our developers and put them in a two-day hackathon, and they produced absolutely incredible things. In a matter of 48 hours, we had 20 new features to the platform. So if you think about remote work and what you would be needing most, it is a Zoom integration. So you can Zoom directly within the platform. Um, we increased things with Slack. We gave different perspectives. We gave the opportunity to do sort of an out of office on the platform because people are working such strange hours. We wanted you to be able to say, you know, I'm not available right now. And so there's a status function. So all of these things were added into the platform. And then like we have always done communicated directly to our users. So um, we published the letter that our co-founder sent to the employees just to say, this is how we're doing things. You can have confidence in us that we are going to stick around and survive this. We are listening to you and this is how we want to implement your feedback. So that, that was the purpose of this. We also felt like there was so much negativity around um, COVID and, and how, of course it is, it's a terrible, terrible thing for the world to go through in so many capacities. We wanted to try and find um, some silver linings. So we took the research that um, we inevitably get and in having hundreds of thousands of users and picking out some work habits from there. We did a survey um, and we produced what we called here um, the state of remote work. So we wanted to look at little bits of positivity that were happening in this time. 
So um, maybe people like working from home. It turns out a lot of them do. Maybe people, people are more productive. We found out some disturbing things as well, like people are showering 17% less in the day. And we're able to take these bits of positivity and share them across social channels um, directly with new potential customers just to say as terrible as the situation is there are um, little bits to be happy about you know people really miss their co-workers they were talking about taking lunch outside that kind of thing and um, we really focused on that to give people something to smile about in a time that was really tough to really more directly add value we created a bunch of templates so we went to our thousands of teams that um, have always been remote work and said, give us your best advice. What are you doing really well? What has really worked for you within the platform and created templates for people to work directly on. So we shared templates, um, all, all totally free, of course. Um, and we also launched our free tier, which we hadn't done before, to countries that were most affected so that they could get on with no barrier to entry and use, use the platform right away. Um, we took best practice of how people have been successfully working from home and released them um, here. And so that, that's been super popular for people to grab templates, be able to really transition easily and, and get going. And then the last um, sort of bit I want to show you is a video. And I'll show you the video. And I want you to think while you're watching it, um, what might have not gone as well as we thought. We are all about exposing and sharing um, places where we learned. Well, this was a learning experience and let's see if you can figure out why. Do you and your team need to work remotely? Monday.com brings your team together wherever you are so you can continue to collaborate, manage and track your work in one easy to use platform. Hit the ground running with our ready-to-go templates so you can keep collaborating with your teammates and track everything your team is working on. Monday.com seamlessly integrates with the tools you already use, video conferencing, messaging, CRMs, and much more. It centralizes everyone's work into one shared and easily accessible workspace. So whether you're in the office, home, overseas, or on the go, Monday.com will keep your team more connected than ever. Start your free trial today. So seemingly colorful ad, lots of fun, just spot on in the remote work messaging. There was um, early on, you see the four characters come together and hug and shake hands. Well, that is not practicing social distancing. Of course, That's we exactly shot this. I was going to say, I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. You see it, you're like, whoa, people should not be touching. So we... Um, we shot it months ago and, and of course had different copy and content plans for it, but we wanted to repurpose the video um, to use it as an ad in this time. And we got a ton of feedback saying, you know, we're not practicing social distancing, which of course we are, it was, it was just done months ago before this. So that is an example of a uh, well-intended but poorly executed result. Um, and that's sort of, yeah, high, high level really uh, insight into a few different things we were doing. We really wanted to, be humane and speak to the person, to add value, and to move as quickly as we could with our customers' needs. Nice, thank you. That's that's yeah, that's super interesting, and it's always interesting to see how we, you know, do the things that we don't think about um, <laughs> as we do these 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 things. Um, I'm curious if you had thoughts about budget as well, considering you know, the, what's happening in the world, and uh, you know, it's always that uh, that saying that when uh, things are tough. The first budgets to get cut are the marketing budgets. I don't know if that's for every company, but I'm curious if that was part of your uh, your concerns or or something that in influenced what you were working on. Yeah, it, it's for us. For us, it wasn't so much affecting our um, our own behavior because um, we happen to be very fortunate to have created a platform that supports remote work, which is what so many people right. need right now. So we. We maintained our budgets. It was a matter of reallocating though. Just like Elise was talking about with Capsule, we love a good Subway ad and had 12 global campaigns planned, you know, billboards in Mexico City and on the Tube and in Paris. And, you know, those aren't um, very effective places to be advertising right now. So we had to very quickly um, change gears and figure out uh, different channels to be marketing. Uh, but we didn't we didn't reduce our budgets. Of course, we have seen 
um, a big change in our, not big change, but some change in our customer base of the, you know, small and medium sized businesses, businesses in hospitality who um, no longer have the budget to afford Monday, but we've also seen a large increase in companies that we couldn't have imagined closing deals so quickly in. So there's certainly a lot of budget reallocation going on, right. um, but we feel fortunate not to have felt the, the cut just yet. Right. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Elise, yeah. we'd love to see some, uh, some of your activities. Um, everything you told us about the campaign that you did sounds super exciting and um, excited to see what you put together. Yeah, for sure. So um, I can go ahead and share my screen and talk through that. Um, Little green button at the bottom. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to start by um, sharing basically right when, when things came out. Um, what we saw was we started seeing just a bunch of emails from a whole bunch of companies that like didn't have anything to really say, but wanted to reach out to their their base about something and say that they're there for them, et cetera. I don't, that's not the case with Monday. Like they are actually, that is actually like people concerned about productivity being at home, but I'm talking about like, you know, you know, there was, there's like little, some local soap shop, like was sent me an email, you know, like all sorts of random types of companies. And so I think we started to see that come in and felt like it was really important that if we were going to say something that it was going to be really thoughtful and um, relevant and we actually had something to say like we had originally drafted an email and I had like spent like an hour going through all like the CDC guidelines and all of that and it just felt I felt like I was literally just copying the email I had just seen from Oscar or, or something it was you know and so or ZocDoc like and it just didn't feel right to do anything so for about a month or three weeks or so we didn't really do anything other than like just really focus on trying to get as many people prescriptions as possible and try to ramp up our pharmacy staff and like there wasn't a whole lot that we were like really doing externally it was really just like heads down trying to like serve the community um and then all of a sudden we like picked our heads up and we're like you know we really should be there was a lot of like talk at that time of just people who were just like congregating in pharmacies and kind of stocking up like on their meds the same way that they kind of were with toilet paper and whatnot and it just kind of raised this flag to us of like let's just not make it totally about capsule obviously like we're going to promote our brand but um let's just try to make it really clear to people that like whether you use capsule or not, like you should get your prescriptions delivered, like the same way that you are like, people should be getting grocery delivery if they're comfortable with it and they can, it's like, it's just an option that people should know about. Um, and let's not be overly pushy about it. Um, and let's try to see if we can, uh, just like put that message out there. Um, so what we started with was a uh, video, um, on Instagram from our founders. I'm just gonna pl play it to you first and, th and then I talk through what we did from there. Hi everybody, I'm Eric Canariwala and I'm the founder and CEO of Capsule. Capsule is a new kind of pharmacy. We deliver prescriptions for free the same day all over New York City. The accelerating COVID-19 outbreak in our community is a public health crisis. As a New Yorker, I'm staying home to help further limit transmission of the virus. As a CEO of Capsule, I'm partnering with doctors, hospitals, and local government officials to keep our community and our city safe. Here's a couple things you can do to help support the community at this time. First, reach out to your loved ones, particularly those over 60 or with weakened immune systems, and make sure they have enough food and household supplies and look after them. Two, medication delivery, like food delivery and grocery delivery, is an essential tool in helping contain further spread of the outbreak. The CDC currently recommends having two to four weeks of supply of medication on hand. Here's how you can make sure you and your loved ones are covered. First, call your doctor for a new prescription or call your pharmacy for a refill. You can also have your doctor send a new prescription to capsule 
or transfer a refill over to us for quick, free, same-day delivery. If anyone in your care is at risk of running out of medications, do not wait. Call your doctor for a new prescription. If you have any questions about your prescriptions or your insurance, you can also call or text one of our pharmacists and we'll respond within an hour. Right now, more than ever, it's important we all come together to support our community to keep everyone in it safe and healthy. Thank you and be well. So that was, I mean, clearly he you know, mentions capsule a fair amount, but the point was also like, if you're not gonna use us, like use some kind of medication delivery. Um, and from there, we decided that we should at least try to see if there would be some influencers that would be willing to um, not be paid and just to help us relay that message. Um, and so what we did was we created um, just a, a couple of like very simple assets that just showed people that allowed for influencers to post that specific uh, image themselves if they wanted, they didn't have to, obviously like we weren't paying them, but just like to encourage different influencers to put out this, this PSA. Um, and so, we went out to influencers and the response was like really overwhelming um, with the number of people that just posted something about Capsule. Um, we ended up having, uh, reaching probably over 3 million impressions. There was probably around 100 plus different influencers who also, you know, did something around Capsule. Um, not one of those influencers were paid. Um, and it was just a really nice message that was just around like, keep New York safe, stay home and get your prescriptions delivered. Like the only thing really capsule about it is the logo at the bottom. And, and we even debated if we should have a logo at all. Um, but felt like, you know, it was fine for us to, to, to have a little bit of promotion. And so this is just a really quick, like screen grab of some of the people who started to, to, um, write back about us. Um, and it was just really inspiring to see. It drove a huge amount of traffic and engagement to our site. Um, it really kind of helped both from a new customer standpoint as well as just building love for the brand with, with current customers as well. It really helped. We saw a huge amount of shares um, to new accounts. Um, and a huge increase in following on, um, on Instagram. Um, so the, I'm just kind of flicking through a number of different uh, people who who had just ended up posting. We didn't really give any instructions for what to do. It was the bin's basic instructions was just help us spread this PSA that you can get your medications delivered. So what do you think was it that got people to want to help even without any, you know, getting anything in return? Or how do you, what advice can you give to the marketers yeah. here to you know, and how to communicate the, the value of their product in a way that others would want to spread that as well? You know, I think whether you're talking to consumers or whether you're talking to influencers or whoever to promote your product, like everyone wants to be a good person or do the right thing. And like, if you're overly pushy or salesy or there's like some ulterior, big ulterior motive, then, um, I think people can get really turned off and it's all about authenticity, whether it's that's like B to C or B to B to C or B to B. Um, and so like, I think it's very similar to, to what Leah was talking about, right? It wasn't just like posting content just to post content. It was trying to like actually be helpful. Um, you know, and I think that's like the same thing here. Like we were just trying to be helpful and, and not be overly pushy about um, our brand. Um, and and by not setting any like specific expectations or like really specific guardrails, we allowed people to just kind of like express themselves freely. And so people, I think were much more open to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think like we had the benefit of the fact that it was a very relevant product for the time, but I think the way that we approached it was um, with kind of a real humble confidence of like, we know we can help you, um, but we're not gonna push this on you but we're here for you. We want to look after you. Um, 
so that's just a, a quick kind of smattering of what we did. Um, I just play with you, play for you. So like one of the, we had our design team just build a few assets that we could post that, that people could post if they wanted to, um, share that out. Um, and the last thing that I just wanted to share was, um, we did actually just update, not everything was completely, uh, you know, influencer. So we did do um, some adjustments to our TV ad. So I just thought it would be interesting for people to, to see that, to see what we did on the paid front to try to um, complement things. COVID-19 can spread rapidly, or we can make choices that help us stay home and stop the spread. Choosing to have your medication delivered can help keep our community safe. Capsule Pharmacy can deliver your prescription safely to your home for free. To get started, go to Capsule.com and fill in the form. When your medication is ready, we'll text you a checkout link. Simply check out and schedule free same-day delivery. Bring your medication to you so you can stay safe at home. Get started in 15 seconds. Capsule.com. That was an, that was just a, a previous TV spot where we just quickly changed the messaging. The music was like little overly upbeat, um, you know, added in a couple of animations and, and again, tried to tie it kind of to what we were doing on organic social of just like, there's things that you can do addition, like similarly to getting uh, groceries delivered with getting your prescriptions delivered as well. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, what we did. And I think like our learnings was that, you know, to just be really, um, authentic and humble and uh and thoughtful about not being too aggressive you know at any point but especially right now that like everyone's kind of like cobbling together their own routines and the last thing that they need is like you know another brand like shouting at them that like we're in this together like they just like want it to it's something that's going to be helpful um and so we're trying to to, to do that that's that's great. Thank you. This was really, really interesting. Um, and then maybe I'll just take over the screen share quickly. Sorry, one second. All right. So I hope you can see my screen. Um, and I'll share with you a little bit about um, what we did in order to communicate uh, how we can help companies during this time. And um, one of the things that we kept hearing as the quarantine started was that um, companies realize they now want to upgrade their digital content. They want to, they know that content is this magical thing that helps convert users and engage them and uh, get a lot of interesting data points about your users, but they're not really sure how to do that or how to do it right. And so we realized to continue uh, a lot of what, what Leah and Elise were talking about, um, you know, to how can we take the approach of supporting rather than selling or aggressively marketing? And the, our immediate instinct was to say, we want to offer extended access to our platform to companies that want to upgrade their content and to improve their content strategy. And so you can see we did small things like add um, a little banner to our website and created this um, blog post uh, using our platform that communicated uh, some of how companies can use interactive content in general, uh, you know, again, to communicate with their audience and to upgrade their content strategy. And as an addition to that, we also reached out to our networks, um, you know, different people in the company and said, um, we're just here to offer you a consultation uh, on how to upgrade your content, regardless of our tools or, you know, we're just here to help. And I personally was approached by uh, a lot of small businesses, for example, who said, you know, we, we can't rely on the same tactics that we used to. Uh, our digital presence needs to be upgraded um, you know, what can we do? How can we, uh, how can we do that? And just needed advice. Um, and it, I think was a great opportunity to just connect um, with, with companies that we don't necessarily always have a chance to connect with. Um, and as a result of that, this is just one more example of, you know, content that we created. So um, how to create a work from home guide. 
Um, and as a result of that, we really saw different companies come to our platform and start creating content, um, you know, for the benefit of the needs that they had uh, or still have during this time. This uh, is an example from a company called People. They have a, a search engine technology and they used our platform to create uh, different interactive content for their own employees to engage them around you know, ergonomics knowledge that they need to be aware of now that they're working from home, um, how to ensure productivity as they're working from home, uh, and different information that they wanted to convey with the advantage of uh, you know, creating it in a way that really engages their audience and allows them to see who of their employees actually engaged with what and how uh, the content performed. Uh, and that's also, um, one of the reasons that uh, Audi started working with us during this time uh, in, you know, with the purpose of doing internal training and training their employees, just walking you through some of the results of our mutual work uh, that we were already able to, um, to create a case study from um, and to, to use our tools in order to increase internal engagement and really um, implement messages that are harder to implement uh, you know, when we're all remote. And we've also seen, and just kind of showing you as I speak, a few examples of how our platform was used to communicate information about the coronavirus. So you can see here, all of these are tools that were created, um, or content was created with our platform. This is uh, a company that created um, a hub for small businesses um, to have information about some of the financial implications of uh, the coronavirus and uh, you know some things that they need to know and I think you know with all of the misinformation that was going around around the coronavirus uh, the ability to create content that truly engages people and uh, you know converts them or allows you to uh, to understand what they're interested in you know going back to the user feedback aspect that, that Leah was talking about uh, is even more crucial than than ever, um, and the key, you know, that what guide what was like our guidance in in the different activities that we did was how do we do things that actually provide value to our audience? And one of the things that we did, this is actually a funny story. Um, we decided to create Zoom backgrounds. Uh, Shirley, our amazing designer, who's, uh, who's on this meetup right now, uh, created a bunch of uh, cool backgrounds. You can see it right behind me. Um, and that ended up being one of the most popular pieces of content that we put out through, uh, throughout this time, uh, you know, because it, it provided value to the audience uh, that we were communicating with. And so other than providing value with our platform, we just created something that, you know, was fun and ended up, you know, this post specifically um, got I think, around 80% engagement rate. So really, it, it engaged people. Uh, it started getting spread around by social influencers, and uh, and and you know, it was something that we were really surprised by. We totally didn't expect it. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to mention was, um, you know, with everyone doing a lot of virtual events, kind of like the one we're in now something that we immediately decided that we want to do is virtual meetups. And we felt that the need to connect people is, is even you know, stronger than ever. And um, just getting people uh, with, you know, to talk to people who are in a similar industry or in a similar role, and just to get them all on a Zoom uh, and, and talk to each other and share challenges and be honest and share the things that worked, but also mostly the ones that didn't. Um, it's something that we've also seen uh, that, that brought a lot of value to our audience and um, helped us connect um, with, with potential uh, you know, companies that, that we've never been in touch with before. So this is uh, a little bit about uh, how we spent the last couple of months. And I want to now go back to the poll question that you had answered earlier, just so that we can see. Um, what your thoughts are about marketing tactics you're going to utilize. I think that's one of the biggest questions in all of our minds right now is really, um, what will the future look like? What does the new normal look like for, for marketing specifically, uh, you know, for, uh, for the, the digital uh, space? And um, I'm going to vote on create more content because you know, that's what I love. And I see that I'm not alone. Okay, so that's great. 
Um, I see that virtual events are also popular uh, and then influencer campaigns and customer surveys. Um, awesome. I think um, all really important things and, and uh, the more that we can hear from our audiences and learn from that, uh, the better. I'm going to stop sharing quickly and jump to our chat. So I want to leave time for questions. So if anyone has um, questions, now's the time uh, to, to type them in. So looking to see if we have any questions here. Um, sorry, one second. So but as, as I go through uh, what everyone wrote here in the chat or the questions that you might be typing in right now, um, so Leah and Elise, I'm curious to hear from both of you thinking of you know, the future uh, or the near future in terms of your work or marketing in general, what do you think will be different? What will it look like um, considering everything that's happening in the world? Any one insight or thought, obviously none of us know, but uh, any thought that you can share um, with us? So Leah, maybe you wanna get started. Sure. I think um, what we've taken out of this that we'll, we'll keep doing moving forward, no matter what the world continues to look like, is um, diversifying our marketing tactics. It's been so much fun to explore new things and figure out new ways to reach people and to influence people and to add the value that we want to, um, that we will keep um, playing with, with new mediums and, and keeping our efforts diversified. So that's what I'd say is, is a big takeaway for us. Nice. Elise, anything you want to add? Yeah, the, I would say very similar, like just continuing to like just try new things because like what might not have worked before is working now and what like was working before isn't doesn't make sense now. Um, I think the other thing that I've just, I'm personally thinking a lot about is like, how do you create something that um, feels really high touch um, in an environment where like, you're literally not supposed to be touching or like having any sort of high touch whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that like, that's what is the beauty with for a lot of brands, but especially, you know, in healthcare or wellness or um, services oriented types of brands where you're, tr you're trying to really be um, a concierge and our brand's really all about like, giving love and looking after people and super lovey, you know, touchy. And so like, I'm trying to think about like, how do we share that love and make it feel high touch in, in a very like personal, not weird virtual way. And I don't have an answer for it right now. It's just like constantly top of mind for me as we enter new markets and people don't really know about us and like introducing yourself virtually is very different than like, you know, being able to build a community face to face. Right. I think that's a really interesting thought is how do you do high touch in a no touch world? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a very good question. Um, I see that we have a couple of questions. First of all, a lot of you are, are uh, I see that we have people from all over the world and uh, Laura here is saying that it's amazing and that's one of the welcome side effects of the current situation, which I totally agree with. It's like, when do you ever get to be in an event with people from so many different countries? I love that. Um, so we have a couple of questions here. Uh, first one from Mary, uh, what is the biggest advice you have for taking positive risks over the next six months with consumers? Um, so it's a very good question. Maybe I'll, I'll just share my thoughts um, before for we hear from, uh, from everyone, but, um, I think for me, uh, it's, it, it goes back to what we just said. It's, uh, if you ask, if you try to hear from your audience what works for them, you're not really taking a risk. You can take risks, but then, you know, get feedback and optimize as you go and make, you know, a calculated or a smart risk um, while kind of really understanding how it resonates. Um, Leah and Elise, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I would just say, like, if not now, when? And the one, you know, one other thing that we've learned overwhelmingly is that we don't know what tomorrow looks like and what sort of communication opportunities or marketing opportunities we're going to have. And so 
if you want to test something out, jump in and try it because we really don't know what tomorrow holds. Right. I totally agree. It's a, uh, it's a good time for experimentation. It, we, we have no choice, right? I mean, if we don't, we don't know what works. So experimenting is what we have. Um, the other thing I would just say is I think like people are, are pretty open to, I, I don't know. I think people are, are in a pretty, like they're saturated by the news. It's like Groundhog's Day for a lot of people. Like I almost feel like people are actually just kind of yearning for a little bit of, of uh, risk and differentiation from brands. Like, right. you know, I don't think we are quite, need to be like walking on eggshells like quite as much as I think everyone was like for the first couple months. Like as long as people are still like being thoughtful of everyone's health and those that are going through things at the same time, like everyone is also, all their, everyone's problems are also relative and are looking for some, escape in their own way and so i think that you know risk and experimentation and and whatnot is probably more welcome now than it ever would be because everyone's doing all sorts of like crazy things on tiktok and whatever and just like everyone's going a little bit stir crazy so like i think as long as it's done in a thoughtful way like why can't brands as well right Totally agree. Um, we have time for one more question. I see we have a question from Laura. Um, so one of the things I've been thinking about is keeping my internal team motivated during this time to get the best results. There's so much change every day. Do you have tips on how to manage this? Um, at least, Leah, any thoughts? So that, that's something we, we think about on a daily basis, um, just because culture is so important to us as a company and how do you create a culture remotely and it also relates to the last question we've been experimenting and trying things um, some things that have been really working for us is we've been sending packages to employees to their homes that have either a drink kit for a happy hour and then doing a remote happy hour or um for people who have kids or or we did like a little fitness package with some you know exercise bands and that kind of thing so that people still feel like um they are doing things together and we also create a lot of opportunities for socialization that would normally happen in a day-to-day -day office we do a lot of either art classes or lectures or different sorts of programming for the team that are of course optional for them to participate in but give them an opportunity to talk to each other in that isn't really officially about um, the work that we're doing. So creating social opportunities has really boosted morale. Um, and we've also put out um, a lot of statements around just understanding that this isn't a normal time and you have responsibilities that you didn't know of before, whether it's taking care of loved ones or kids or whatever else your working conditions certainly don't produce the same results as before. And just letting people know that, that that's okay and we understand and we're all going through it. And um, yeah, those, those are some things that have worked for us. Awesome. Um, so uh, we have a, a couple more minutes left. Uh, first thing I wanted to thank uh, both of our speakers. It was so uh, fascinating to hear from you and I love seeing you know, not just hearing about things, but seeing uh, what you actually worked on and hearing some of the things that worked, some of the things that didn't work as well. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing. Um, and thanks everyone for joining us uh, from many different places. Um, we actually uh, wanted to leave 10 minutes at the end uh, to do some virtual uh, uh, mingling or, or, you know, so to be able to get to know whoever uh, is here with us on the call. Um, so we, uh, we're going to open the breakout rooms function. If you don't know it, it just allows us to um, speak in virtual rooms. And if ever, anyone wants to stay and get to know the people um, that are on this meetup, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we'll leave a few uh, minutes for that. Um, and other than that, thank you so much for joining and uh, looking forward to seeing you all soon in real life, I hope. Thank you for organizing Shakar and Avery. It was great. Oh, yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And setting up the breakout rooms.